Good morning. It's Thursday, uh, which in late May, which generally means weddings uh, here at Common Farm Flowers in Somerset. It's six o'clock in the morning, so I'm always an early starter. Um, and I've got a different kind of wedding this week. It is a buckets and posies wedding. I love these weddings because they're affordable <laughs> for everybody. And it means that um, I think it's a great way to use your wedding budget. You have to be very clear that you have time on the Friday to do the flowers yourselves or the day before, obviously. Um, the flowers behind me are left over from um, a DIY wedding flowers workshop I did on Monday here at the farm. And I had six students and we just went through all the things you have to think about when you're thinking about doing your own wedding flowers. Um, and we made these. One of my students was a really lovely girl and she kind of not delighted. She's delighted to be getting married, but not kind of, she didn't want her wedding to be too wedding-y. And, um, which is why these flowers aren't too flowery. <laughs> because we were looking at ways of having a wedding which didn't feel overwhelming. And I think um, for a lot of people, not everybody wants, you know, a wall of white peonies and a fishtail dress. Uh, sometimes people want something really simple. And while they're keen, you know, they want to get married and have the formal acknowledgement that they're going to try and live with the same person for the rest of their lives. They don't want it to be sort of overwhelming. So, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh. No, you never know. Anyway, um, so we made these sort of less flowery arrangements with her in mind, and it was really fun. And, um, but behind me, I'm going to turn around a minute and show you what I've got for this, uh, for these DIY weddings. And then I thought, um, I'll show you the bride's bouquet and some of the ideas they're having, they've had to make, keep the price down, but keep the wow factor up. So my lovely client has all of these lovely mixtures to play with to make uh, the table centers and things. But the treat for me, because uh, this is all set for them, is that I get to go out and just cut the bride's bouquet and the buttonholes, which is not an enormous amount. And it means you can kind of channel the whole thing. It's really very nice for me. I really like doing this because I can put all of the effort that I would normally put into a whole wedding into one bouquet and some buttonholes. Anyway, come on, let's go and cut. So here we are several hours later and I'm making a very, very light cream and white bride's bouquet and I can hear you saying but the roses aren't out but this is because it's for Saturday and it is Thursday the flowers are being collected actually I'm not they're not being collected I'm dropping them off at eight o'clock tomorrow morning at the venue um so I have to make the bouquet in such a way that the roses will be out by then so there's some amount of faith involved in this um, one of the reasons that roses are expensive is because you have to, <laughs> I can't have the bride pricking her finger and bleeding all over her beautiful dress. So I have to really check that I have taken off all the, um, all the thorns and you couldn't, if you, this is why when you go to a florist like me and I grow most of my flowers, you will get flowers like this. You can get roses. This is a climber um, that climbs up the side of my house and it's the first first of my roses to flower every year. This would be very hard to buy in a at a market because can you imagine what the grower would say? No, I'm not cutting those. They take too long, too much of a fiddle. Nobody's going to pay the price. Whereas people like me um, have patience and will. And I like having a rose climbing up my house. And everything that grows here has to earn its living. So look at that. There's just one lovely rose. And there's my bouquet. So I'm going to 
tuck this great big swathe of rose into the back of the bouquet so that my bride is going to carry it like this. And it the problem with white flowers is they sort of disappear often into the mix, um, especially when they've got a day or so to go before the before the event. And it's it's hard, it makes it very, very hard to photograph. Um, they do look pretty on the day. I quite often will add a bit of cream. So the roses are quite creamy. They get paler as they come out, but it gives you contrast. Otherwise, you know, just white and green, they, the flowers fade away between each other. So also my bride is having a sweet pea with a tiny little bit of blue in the edge. That's as blue as it's going to get, so it fades as it opens. But that little bit of blue flake will show up in the mix as it grows. And I'm also giving her some of this gorgeous, um, this is an annual tree mallow, uh, Lavatera, which I may be pronouncing wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Um, if you want to learn how I make these lovely bouquets, look, it's it's nice because what you have to do is you have to imagine it being held. So it's got a little, it's trailing down a little bit when my lovely bride actually carries it. Um, if you want to know more, sorry, I'm here. <laughs> if you want to know more about making bouquets and how I do it, I have a bridal flowers demo coming up. Uh, on my website, you can book a place and I will take you through the whole bride's bouquet and so on, how to. Um, and then I have lots of other demos through the summer of you know how, how we do the kinds of floristry that we do here. Sometimes people say on my YouTube, oh, please, can you show us the detail? And I'm afraid, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm in this to earn a living. And so um, if you'd like the really detailed stuff, come on a workshop and, um, and there I have no secrets. Um, and if the time is not convenient for you, for our workshops, we can always send you the recording. That's the Ami Majors going in. Can you see it? And this will be more out by Saturday as well. So this has got two days before it's carried down the aisle. It's quite, um, it's quite exciting as a florist. I've got lovely things that mean things in this bouquet as well. So I'm giving, I've, I've said this before, but I love doing this. It amuses me enormously. So this is honesty gone to seed. And people always say, you're not supposed to cut your honesty because you're cutting the money from your house. But as you know, I have sold this bouquet to my lovely bride. And so I think Fair exchange is no robbery. And also in her bouquet is a representation of money. So I hope that she and her husband will have a prosperous life together. Um, and I'm going to put a little bit of that in the buttonholes, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm also putting, because I think it really um, smells gorgeous, especially with sweet peas. I think sweet peas and mint are absolutely the best scent together. So I've got ordinary apple mint, but I've also got, with a variegation to it, uh, that's pineapple mint. And I'm putting them sort of on the outside of the bouquet. So when the bride holds the bouquet, holding it will release the scent. And, um, you know, sometimes people are, it's quite scary getting, well, it's not scary, but, you know, it's quite nerve wracking that moment before you walk down the aisle. And so, um, Having something like mint, the scent of mint in the in the whole process is very calming. I'm keen on that for a bit of a calming feel. Just tucking those sweet peas in there. Um, and that is nearly done. It's very white and cream. There's some iris in there, which is going to pop. There is... Um, there is honeysuckle which means constant devotion. And somewhere is some ivy. And ivy means 
fidelity in marriage. <laughs> so I'm giving her all this meaningful thing. She probably won't notice any of it. Um, but it's a really nice big bouquet. It is quite a big bouquet. It's quite light because it's got the structure, the, um, the roses are quite strong. And so they've given her quite a lot of structure which will um, hold nicely as she goes down the aisle. Um, I'm going to get her one more piece of Lavatera. Um, I've given her some, gra some grass. Ah, look, it's really hard for you to see what's going on, <laughs> but it is a lovely big bouquet. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. It's really hard to show. Oh, that's better. You can see it. So um, you can see how she carries it this way and it's got a bit of a hang down, um, which will be good. And then her bridesmaids are going to have roses in their hair, one each, which is very attractive. And I will make miniature versions of this for the groom and his gentlemen to wear in their lapels. Just tuck this one. I'm always pudging bouquets. So when I, when I make wedding flowers, I'll start with um, start with something quite hefty to make, and um, and and get onto the bride's bouquet quite sort of halfway through the day when I've got a hand in. It's like an it's quite an energetic thing to do making a bride's bouquet, um, and so. Oh yeah, that's so. I have today made some quite big arrangements that are going into my so my local deliveries. I've done all those to give myself to get to give myself some sort of get myself fit for it. And tuck this right in the middle. There we are. And there is my bride. Oh yeah, it's very attractive. She's got something to look at. This this rose will be coming out at the top. It's hanging down nicely. There's a bit of a bit of weight to it. It's white and green as requested. Oh, that one seems to have cracked. So I'll tuck it in a bit more. Always, I'm always using the using the material to support. The one bit of material to support the rest. This is, I'm, li I'm sort of sewing this in. There we are. And no, I don't wire anything. No wiring there. So it's all held up by each other. I'm going to tie it all up. And then I'm going to make the buttonholes. So it's got for meaning in it. I've had a really nice time. So I cut all the main flowers yesterday. So she's got uh, 15 times five is, she's got 750 stems. <laughs> she's got 15 buckets of 50 stems each to do her table centers and she's doing them. That's the DIY bit. Um, so she's got 750 stems to do 12 table centres with. I think that'll be plenty. And there's her bouquet, which is very soft and pretty. And now I'm going to put that to one side, cut the stems off. And I'm going to make buttonholes which will be very like this. This is a really wild, it's a lovely venue, um, Sparkford Hall near Wincanton. As you know, we're between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton. There you are, That's I think that's very attractive. I'm pleased with that. Pop her in some water and we're gonna make, and we're gonna make some buttonholes. Um, so yes, if you fancy learning more, uh, and the detail of how we do this, then um, do book a place on any of our demos and workshops this summer. Um, we have them, we have, they run kind of 
Wednesdays and Fridays in term time. So um, hopefully there'll be something you can enjoy. Right, buttonholes. I'll show you when I've done them. Because <laughs> you have to come on a workshop to see exactly how I do it. But I'll show you when I've done them. Here's the bride's bouquet when she's finished. I'd say that is very, very lovely. Very lovely. Pleased with that. It's a funny time of year for the light in here, but you get a better picture when I film it like that. Yeah, very pretty. When I film from this direction, you really see what's going on in the studio. Look, there's buckets for somebody to collect behind on the floor, and then there are all the flowers for the wedding, and there's bits of furniture and boxes, and I don't know what else, and right down the other end, Fabrizio's making the blackboards for all the announcements for the Queen's Jubilee party. But anyway, I'm pleased with my bride's bouquet. So we've got the bride, which you've seen, and then um, we have a little posy for the bridesmaid, and she's only a little girl, so it's a tiny little posy, but it's got sweet peas and roses and mint in it. So if she's a bit nervous, it's very nice to have a bit of uh, calming scent in there. So the bride and the bridesmaid are done. Nine buttonholes, and none of them are quite the same. And this is very Common Farm Flowers house style. Um, I don't think, <laughs> I'm not keen on things being too matchy-matchy. So um, they're all slightly different. And they've got to last till Saturday, so none of the roses have popped yet. And I'm going to write a card for my clients so that they know to keep the... Because they're all in individual um, test tubes and they've got to keep the water topped up. You'd be surprised how much they drink. And then uh, I've got a bucket of options for the bridesmaids to put in their hair. And then 15 buckets uh, for the bride and her family and friends to make into table centres tomorrow. And I just think as an option for doing wedding flowers, this is really, really good value. Uh, it's fun. It helps with your confidence. So do come on one of my little demos, uh, have a look at my workshops on my website and book a space uh, because that's my job is to make it so that you can feel confident doing flowers yourselves, whether you have ordered flowers from a local flower farmer or you've grown them yourself. I think there is a, it is lovely using really fresh garden flowers. Um, so they're going to hopefully have fun tomorrow and the wedding will be on Saturday. And all I've had to do as the florist is cut the thousand odd stems, make the buttonholes, the bridesmaid and the bride. And so I'm very happy. <laughs> My client's happy. And it's a great way to do a budget wedding. It's, and it isn't going to look budget. The flowers are really very five star because they've grown in my lovely sort of herbaceous bordery garden and um i think it's going to look lovely anyway it's a thing to consider if you're conscious that weddings can be really or any kind of event is expensive um then do consider doing a part of the flowers yourself and in this case i think it's really sensible that the bride has asked me to do her bouquet and the buttonholes and the bridesmaid and um her the little bridesmaids, the big girls, the big bridesmaids, are going to wear, just carry one big stem each or put something in their hair. Um, and so I'm giving them options that they can choose from. But, you know, that's easy. Um, so there you are. That's a budget wedding option. Uh, and this one is at Sparkford Hall this weekend. And I hope they have a really lovely time. Right, better get on. Uh, onwards and upwards if you've enjoyed this clip then please do subscribe to the channel you can press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up and if any of the tips and tricks i give as i go along are helpful or useful or you just would like to support the channel then uh, you can always buy me a coffee and the coffee buying link is in the blurb to all my clips thank you very much for watching and i will see you soon bye This is all the DIY bits, waiting to be loaded in the van. I think they've got enough for 12 table centres, don't you? And it's all tucked in the van. 
and we are what they say in the film industry, a go project.